All right, let's just get to it. Um, next up, we have Lucy Morris, who can just come here and get her slides ready. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to give you a little bit more information. Lucy is from New Zealand, correct? Right? Yes. <laughs> um, and what she really does is build communities. So in uh, New Zealand, she started the Women in Gaming community. And now she is living in Germany, so just next door. And she um, started a creative support group, um, whatever that may be, uh, just moral support to creative support, all kinds of support um, for uh, gamers, which uh, has already reached over 140 members. So uh, she's going to talk to you about the communities and how to build them even across borders, wherever you are, um, wherever you know, you're working, playing, gaming. Um, you can just nurture that and foster that, and she's going to tell you all about it, hopefully really soon. Uh, sorry for distracting. Oh, <laughs> by all means. All right, perfect. You good? Okay, you're going to take that one. All right, enjoy. Is it working? Okay, good. Okay, so quick show of hands. How many people here are a member of a local game dev community in their country or city? And how many of you are a member of an online game dev community, like Reddit's our game dev, make game? Okay, well, more of you should join. But <laughs> anyway, I'm here to talk about um, local and remote play, um, building indie communities and events without borders. So if, if I were asked to name one thing that has helped me grow, helped me learn my trade, and enabled me to flourish as an indie games developer, I would definitely immediately reply as community. These communities take many shapes and forms, such as online communities such as Make Game, TIG Source Forums, IndieDB, Reddit, Twitter. Just go to my slides. And uh, they can be physical ones like the event we're all at today. Great event, guys. And uh, the local meetups in our area, we, we all cram into like tiny cafes and you can start a conversation with anyone by saying, hey, do you make good video games? I make video games too, that's so awesome. But they can, they can even be the communities that come together around events in the indie dev world, such as game jams. Like if anyone's heard of One Game a Month, that incredibly dedicated posse of people. Um, or in support of those of us who encounter unfair hardship in our trade or just as individuals in a collective. So we have uh, things like Zoe Quinn's Steam submission for Depression Quest and the, the devs rallying at her mistreatment. Um, we also have Banner Saga versus King.com and the Candy Jam that was sort of like a, a big FU from indie devs to King.com, which was great. And uh, we also have uh, Brandon Boyer's Humble Bundle, which was a huge banding together of the indie game devs in support of this amazing guy that needed to pay off his medical bills because, you know, like the entire situation was really crazy. So these are just a few examples of ways that community has, has benefit us as developers as a whole. So... My tablet's crashing. Um, these communities are the cornerstones of our careers as developers, our own personal and professional growth, and for the support we need to explore and blossom in this constantly changing field. So without the communities that I've been privileged to be part of, whether they're larger entities or communities that I've helped create out of necessity, I would currently be at a huge disadvantage. I wouldn't have had the breadth of opportunity, the platform for feedback that can help me improve personally as an indie developer, and I wouldn't have felt like I belonged. The, the indie developer community has an undeniably unique feeling of closeness and camaraderie, and for that we are incredibly, incredibly lucky. People I barely knew in passing on Twitter have become close friends and colleagues. People that I met at the first dev meetup I arranged in my area in Germany, which consisted of about like eight people sitting in my tiny, dingy German apartment, um, and now people that I make games with on a regular basis, and they're some of the most important people in my life now. So community is an apparent strength for us indies. And if we're not growing it and utilizing it like the living, breathing being it is, then we are all missing out. As a primarily digitally connected entity, we have the ability to orchestrate these communities beyond borders, beyond barriers, gender, sexuality, race, language, and beyond nationalities. So uh, here's my sort of personal story about these experiences and how it's a great thing that that's where we're headed. Okay, so I never used to be an indie games developer. 
Um, it was always a profession that I had admired from afar in New Zealand, um, growing up and studying there. And uh, I'd always been an avid game enthusiast, much to the dismay of my father. Um, I had begged for a Game Boy Color nonstop for most of my primary school life until he finally laid down a complete refusal, saying, Lucy, video games, those things are going to ruin your life. Uh, if you put half as much time into practicing the piano as you did playing video games, which I'm sure you could just like substitute practice the piano for any number of things, your parents would probably say that to you as well. Um, yeah, and he trailed off to insinuate I'll be the next Rackman off by now, which is incredibly untrue. Um, but programming wasn't particularly encouraged much at my all girls high school. Uh, but I kept trying to work in video game things into the curriculum, even though like I was being denied the opportunity, like writing an entire suite of RPG music for my finals and music composition. And I was really grasping at straws that I felt that I personally could never reach. But um, a tertiary education back home in New Zealand is incredibly expensive, so studying in New Zealand at university is maybe $9,000 plus a year. If you times that by four years, then that's quite a lot of money. And uh, the only game creation university in New Zealand was far out of my budget as a wide-eyed, bushy-tailed 18-year-old just leaving high school. Um, but under the social pressure of our society to go to a degree, um, I did something because I wanted to challenge so uh, now I have a double honours degree in Mandarin, Chinese and Japanese. Um, but yeah, I was destined for a career in foreign policy and diplomacy until I moved uh, somewhat suddenly to Germany. And I even had an interview with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in New Zealand to be a foreign policy analyst. Um, and that was a couple of days before I left for Germany. So um, I left it all behind and I found myself now in Europe with a lot of time on my hands and a, a career to reconsider. So I sat down and twiddled my thumbs. Um, a friend in New Zealand that knew I was a hobbyist 2D artist uh, referred a game developer there to me, and uh, he asked me to help him with his game assets for a mobile game he was working on. So I started to draw, and I absolutely fell in love. I could do this. I could do it after all, but I didn't know where to start. Um, I just moved to Germany, and uh, Germany was never really a country I envisaged myself ending up, considering uh, my language set is very much oriented to Asia, but I, I really wanted to learn. Um, we can leave my German at probably the fact it's sehr scheiße, but I was super isolated, and I really wanted to learn how to make games. I put it off for so long. Um, I had the basics of programming uh, from typing away on a BBC Micro as a kid, because my, my father was a, a computer scientist, so I got to do all that cool stuff. He, he still doesn't think that game creation is a very legit profession for me, but that's another long story for another day. Um, but yeah, I typed away on BBC Micros, I, I did programs in basic where I was making little vending machines. and. You know, typing in, I want a Coke, and the computer replying, you now have a Coke, was like the most magical thing to me at like six years old. It just absolutely blew my mind. So I wanted to be in the community to learn um, how I could make games myself. And, uh, you know, I'd heard about things like the Global Game Jam on the grapevine from the community I'd been admiring afar for years and not taking part in. But I wanted to take part in the Game Jam. I really wanted to join all these people and just make crazy games in 48 hours. And more importantly, I really wanted to create. So um, searching desperately for a group in the area that I'd moved to, which is Nordrhein-Westfalen, there was absolutely nothing. There was big communities in uh, Berlin, Munich, and Hamburg, but there was nothing in my wee corner of Germany. So armed with Google Translate, Facebook, meetup.com, and a desperate burning need to meet more of my kind, I started up the Nordrhein-Westfalen Developers Group. Uh, this was early 2013, and now we're almost at 150 amazingly talented members, all of whom rock. But um, like I mentioned earlier, the first meetup was tiny. It was just eight of us um, in my tiny German apartment with snacks and donuts. So we had seven Germans, one Kiwi. But we got on like a house on fire because we all spoke the same language. We all wanted to create amazing gaming experiences for other people. And as time went on, our little group grew. So uh, we got my d more diverse and more beautifully inclusive. And uh, our last meetup was around 20 to 25 people strong, um, talking about collaboration with each other, proudly demonstrating their games, and uh, just generally having an absolutely smashing time, which was fantastic. 
Um, and despite being in Dusseldorf and around Nordrhein Westphalia, we had people from New Zealand, South Africa, America, Portugal, Spain, several cities within Germany um, with different dialects. And uh, you'd think that we'd been friends for maybe years after an hour of the, the meetup had passed. Like everyone just immediately meshed and got on, and it was so fantastic. And actually, nothing has filled me with, you know, as, as much feeling as accomplishment and inspiration as this community that I helped create with Google Translate. Terrible Google Translate, may I add. Um, a community that is within a physical area in Germany, yet it really has no barriers or borders at all. So, yeah, being a new expat, expat to Germany and not having the best German skills, obviously, like, I ran into difficulties running this group, such as uh, trying to rent venues. Um, I've had some really amusing conversations on the phone with uh, bar owners in Germany, uh, and just, you know, talking to them, well, can we rent your venue? And they're like, was, was, video spiele in Wickles, was? And it's awesome. Um, creating a safe, understandable space for people when not everyone speaks great German or great English, and uh, making sure I can keep creating new events for people that challenge the members. So running our communities these days often presents us with unique multinational challenges as our world and our industry grows more diverse and opens up. It is a privilege and advantage to have grown up in a native English-speaking country like New Zealand when 50% of the internet is written in English and 80% in Latin characters. Therefore, the majority of uh, information and therefore industry-specific information in communities uh, thus also roughly divided. So, yeah, obviously also most of the programming languages are in English. TIG source, IndieDB, Reddit, etc., is also mostly in English. Um, actually, Rami over there made a great post about this on Gamma Sutra last week, um, about the issue, sort of like speaking straight to my mind about this talk, um, stating that the language barriers are actually one of the biggest invisible barriers that exist for us in our communities. So um, this is a huge obstacle that I ran into trying to run uh, the community in Germany, uh, a community where, in a country where English is not the native language, but the native language, which is German, was not something that all the parties or interested members uh, could speak to the technical fluency that talking about game development also demands. So yeah, like how do we solve this conundrum where we have multiple language barriers but still create a space that is constructive and inclusive? After discussing this with the group, we reached our conclusion that no one has to speak anything that they're not comfortable with. Our announcements and game demonstrations are done in English if people want to present, and uh, from then on, they can speak any language that they like. So uh, it's an imperfect solution for a linguistically rich world, as English is often the unifier when you have many countries and cultures come together um, and try to communicate. So to build these communities, you really have to take a look at the individual backgrounds and needs of those within and build a solution around these people. Uh, at the end of the day, all we really want to do is make games and talk games together. And I've got to say, I'm looking forward to our next meeting in May because someone's making a really awesome tank game. But yeah, um, after being in Germany for a while, uh, being an Indian working on my own projects, uh, I entered the AAA industry and I uh, worked at a studio there for a while. I was gaining more experience about the games industry professionally, but also learning a lot about the flaws and things that we can work on firsthand, um, areas that we need to you know, vastly improve on. Especially the lack of women and support for women in the industry in my personal experience wasn't as something that I really want to change. Uh, not every little girl had the advantage of having a computer scientist dad or mum that taught them how to build a PC and program robots and parallax. And uh, not every girl had the opportunity to build robots, and not every woman has an equal chance in our industry today. So I thought back to my situation home in New Zealand when I was growing up, and how I could have circumvented my path to game development. The career that I know now is what I want to do more than anything, and that makes me happy as, by having more resources, support, and encouragement. Um, I, I will say that I don't regret studying what I did at university despite the astronomical cost because it made me who I am today and inevitably brought me to Germany. Um, but I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't have loved to be doing what I've been doing now straight out of high school. So I thought how programming hadn't really been encouraged back in high school. And uh, when it was presented to the teachers, they were fairly disinterested in programming. Uh, for example, I finished my entire final year curriculum um, in computing in two weeks, and I programmed a fully functional PHP website for the school, and they never used it or even really looked at it. So uh, 
yeah, like I wanted girls back home in New Zealand to have these opportunities and to get girls interested in game creation and programming logic and at a young age and give these tools to them. But there was a big problem. I was 18,000 kilometers away in Germany, which is quite far away, 60 hours transit. Um, but it's only a problem if you make it a problem. So um, I reached out to two friends and amazing colleagues. Uh, one is Tara Brannigan, who is the customer relations manager at Pickpock in Wellington. She's absolutely fantastic. And uh, Mike, who's a lecturer at uh, Media Design School, which is the premier game development school in New Zealand. And uh, yeah, I talked to them if they'd be interested in helping me start up Women in Games New Zealand. And uh, I talked to them about some initiatives that I wanted to do. And uh, they said yes, and we started up the group. So we started it in March 2014 with just three of us, and uh, now we have over 50 members, which is quite staggering considering New Zealand has only 4 million citizens. Um, but we'd love to triple, quadruple, what have you, these numbers. Um, we're holding a game jam for high school girls at the game development school where they can uh, learn development, programming, and the torrid horror of trying to complete a game in 48 hours, which everyone should try at some point. Um, and I've drafted an initiative that I will travel back to New Zealand where I'll travel the country, teaching basic programming and game development to girls in the main centers who are interested. So from almost 20,000 kilometers across the world, we now have a supportive community for women interested in game development there, and for women already in the industry. And I couldn't be prouder of my colleagues' work contributing to the project and the women already taking part in our community. We have no barriers. So these communities tick over into the digital world as well. And the groups we take part in online are every bit as important as the physical ones we're also members of. Uh, in 2013, Oh, I just need to skip that. Sorry, I made these yesterday, so I don't really know what's on them. Uh, in 2013, I ran Asylum Jam, which was an international game jam aimed at creating horror games in the spooky month of October without using negative mental health stereotypes um, or wrongfully depicting health professionals as well. And by the end of the jam, we had almost 60 games submitted and around 350 participants. Uh, and... Yeah, it was hosted on the only Game Jam uh, engine around at the time, which was Vimo by Brett Chalupa. Uh, there's been a lot more people jumping on that bandwagon now, and you have uh, itch.io and uh, Game Jolt where you can host Game Jams. But at this time, this was the only one. And uh, I pitched it to a few followers I had on Twitter, which was you know, about 200 people then. And by the end of the jam, we had two physical locations. We had one in Rome, Italy, and one in Colorado in America. Um, we had developers participating from all over the world, and we had coverage of the jam on Joystick, The Guardian, Giant Bomb, pretty much everywhere. Um, and the community that formed around the idea of uh, ignoring a common stereotype in horror games and creating fresh, new, exploratory experiences in horror games was really supportive and heartening to see. Um, people talked about their own experiences with mental health and how they could work it into their games to provide more accurate depictions of their own personal experiences. Uh, they bonded together and teamed up, and this was all organized from a single really shit laptop in a, in a dingy Dusseldorf apartment. So given looking back at it and uh, towards holding Asylum Jam again in 2014, which you should all totally take part in, um, organizing it solo was a hefty job, but nothing was more worth having than uh, having developers from all over the world come together and support each other on an important issue and to use a positive method such as creativity and making video games to generate the games I'd like to see instead of using tired and overused stereotypes. So my advice to everyone here today is to build communities. Build them both for yourself and for the people around you and those even far away from you. What's beautiful about both the internet and the physical world becoming more international is that we're getting people joining our clusters with new ideas, new stories, and new views on the world. Um, running these communities and events, uh, all that have defied physical borders, nationality, or really any other modifier, have been infinitely rewarding both personally and professionally. And these communities are what are gonna make us grow, take us forward as indies, and show the rest of the world who we are, both as people and professionally. So we are all part of a whole, so let's start sharing. Thank you. Does anyone want to ask questions? Okay, that's good too. <laughs>
All right. Thanks, Lucy.